Okay, this, uh, this video is going to talk about literal equations and basically it's just more applications in situations of using formulas that you've probably seen across um, all types of math. So this first one says Christopher's bedroom is two feet longer than it is wide. If the perimeter is 168, what are the dimensions of the room? So I just went ahead and drew a rectangular uh, room. Now, what I do know is that his room is two feet longer than it is wide. Well, I don't know how wide it is, so I'm going to call that X. And I'm going to call this 2 plus X. Now, there's a formula for the perimeter. The perimeter is 2L plus 2W <coughs> plus 2W. Now, we know that the perimeter is 168, so we're going to put that in for P. And we know that the width of the room is x, so there's 2x, and then the length of the room is going to be 2 times 2 plus x. So in this situation, we're just going to go ahead and solve for the letter x. So you got 168 equals 2x plus 4 plus 2x. Now you can combine your like terms, 2x and 2x make 4x, so you got 4x plus 4. Let's subtract that 4. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, like I said, subtract 4. And you got 164 equals 4x, and then you divide both sides by 4. So, I believe x gets you 41. And so the, so that's the width, so the length is 2 more than that, so that is 43. Okay? <clears throat> Another one uses, uh, here's one that says the sum of the measures of the angles of the triangle is 180 degrees. What is the value of x in the given triangle? So there's a couple things you need to know. First off, do you know what that means? That's 90 degrees. So what we can say is you got 90 plus 50 plus 2x degrees is equal to 180. So with this one, uh, you're going to add the 90 and the 150, so that's 40 plus 2x equals 180. So you subtract 140 from both sides. So you get 2x equals 40. Divide both sides by 2. So <coughs> x is 20. Seem pretty simple, right? Awesome. <coughs> Two angles are complementary. One angle measures 20 degrees less than three times the other angle. Find the measure of each angle. So the idea is you have to know what complementary means. I tell people complementary means that it's the right thing to do. So complementary means that the two angles added up together is going to be uh, 90. That makes a right angle. So one angle measures 20 degrees less than three times the other angle. So I don't know which one's which, so I'm going to call this one. X and if I follow it says 20 degrees less than three times the other angle. So 20 degrees less than three times, so 3x minus 20. So with that, knowing the complementary, you're going to say it's 3x minus 20 plus x equals 90 because that's complementary. So now you have 4x minus 20 equals 90. You can add 20 to both sides. So now you get 4x equals 110 divided by 4. So what you get is you get x is 27.5. Okay? Look at this one. The volume of a right squared pyramid is given by the formula V equals one third B squared H. Solve for H. The height of the pyramid. Now, this is a little tricky, but all you got to do is just try to get H completely by itself. So to do that, you just treat H as if it's the only variable. So if I'm looking at this, I, what, what don't I like? 
Well, what's or I tell myself what's happening to the letter H? Well, H is being multiplied by B squared and being multiplied by one third. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to times both sides by three. And when I times both sides by three, I actually clear out that fraction. Okay, so now I have three v is equal to v squared h. Now what's happening to the letter h? Well, it's being multiplied by b squared. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides by b squared. The b squareds on the right go away, so now h is nothing more than three times the volume over b squared. Now where could this be helpful? Well, if they gave you the volume, if they gave you the volume of the of the triangle, or the volume of the pyramid, excuse me, and the base, you just go ahead and just plug it into the formula. Next one there, the trapezoid is given by the formula a equals h over two times a plus b. <coughs> <coughs> solve for the letter a okay so with this one I don't like that 2 in the denominator so I'm going to just go ahead and multiply both sides by 2 and by multiplying by 2 it clears out that fraction okay so now I have 2a equals h times a plus b all right now there's a couple of options you could do here. What I would do first is I actually say, well, H is being multiplied by A plus B. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna divide both sides by H. So now I have two big A over H is equal to A plus B. I'm trying to solve this for A, so I'm just gonna subtract B from both sides. So now I have two A, big A, over H minus B is equal to little a. It's literally that simple if you just treat the variables as if they are, or treat the letters if it's the only variable and just do the arithmetic. This one, uh, solve for y. So really all I gotta do is get everything by itself, or get everything as a y by itself, so I'm gonna subtract five, six, x from both sides. Now I cannot I cannot take 5, 6, x away from 2, so 5, 6, x plus 2. Now I want to get y completely by itself, so what I'm going to do is multiply both sides by 8 thirds. That's the reciprocal, and that's going to knock it out and turn it into a 1. So it's 8 thirds times negative 5, 6, x. plus 2. So then what that becomes is negative 40 over 18x plus 16 over 3. And that's equal to y. Now we can simplify that negative 40 over 18. I believe that's negative 20 over 9x plus 16 thirds. Seems pretty simple, right? How about this one? Uh, S equals B plus one half PS. Solve for the letter P. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is get everything by itself. I get try to get P by itself. So I'm going to subtract B. So I have S minus B equals one half PS. Now, what I can do is I can be real slick here, and I can multiply both sides by two to get rid of that fraction. So I have two times S minus B equals P S. <clears throat> Next thing I want to do, divide by S. So I have two S minus B divided by S and that's equal to P. That one seems a little weird. You want to, you really want to try to you feel like knocking these guys out right here, crossing them out, but you can't because they're separated by that minus sign right there. So it's reduced factors, not terms. Okay, here's another one. S equals P minus PD. It says solve for P. 
But what I do notice here is if I want to solve this for P, these guys have something kind of in common. So I'm going to go ahead and do like a reverse distributive property. Right? And now P is being multiplied by 1 minus D. So what I'm going to do is divide by 1 minus D. And yeah, you can do that. You can divide by a series of stuff. It's okay. So you got S over 1 minus D is equal to P. So I hope that helped. I tried to keep the video under 10 minutes. Um, I'm about six seconds shy, so I'll see you guys soon.